welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Shalini and I make videos about tech, data science, professional development advice, and more. Before we start, make sure to subscribe down below, that way you don't miss a video. Today, I'm talking about grad school, specifically applying to grad school. We're getting into that time of year where a lot of grad school applications are being released and their deadlines are coming up in a few months. In this video, I'm going to break down the grad school application process and give some tips on specific parts of the application as well. Let's get into it. So the first step in applying to grad school is kind of obvious, but in some ways is kind of the hardest part. You want to decide what schools you want to apply to and what exactly you want to pursue a higher degree in. Hopefully, if you're thinking about grad school, you kind of have an idea of what you want to specifically get a degree in, whether it's data science, statistics, business, computer science, or whatever it is. From there, I would do research into schools that have programs related to that field. Keep in mind some different factors and whether that's a deal breaker for you, like location or if it's remote, how long the program is, cost or financial related things, application deadline, resources in the program, the faculty, and if it's part-time or full-time. There are a lot of different programs out there, but having an idea of what you want to get out of the program and how it aligns with your life is important. Now, once you have some schools that you're interested in applying to, the next step is looking at the application deadlines and also the application requirements. The deadlines I've seen range quite a bit based on what school and what program you're interested in. The application requirements also vary a little bit, but in general, they're pretty standard. The main aspects of your application are the statement of purpose, some supplementary essays, letters of recommendation, your resume, your transcript, and test scores. Let's dive into each of these and break it down. First up is your statement of purpose. This is usually a longer essay compared to your supplemental essay questions, but it focuses on you, your background, and why you want to apply to the program. It's a way for the admissions team to get to know you a little better outside of titles, positions, and test scores. In this statement, you really want to emphasize why you want to go to grad school. Think, how does your work experience and your previous school experience play into why you want to pursue this subject further? Create a narrative with all of these things so you can give a clear picture of who you are, what you bring to the table, and why you want to go to this specific grad school and program. You need to show your interest in the program and also a little bit of your personality, but in a professional way. You want to be a unique candidate, someone who is motivated and excited for grad school. Another general aspect of the personal statement is understanding the specific program that you're applying for and the field that you're interested in pursuing. Do you need a lot of research experience for the field? Maybe some work or internship experience? Maybe some teaching experience or something else? Based on the exact field that you're going into, this can vary, but these are the things that you would want to highlight in your personal statement and other parts of your application. Let's move into the second part, the supplementary essays. These are usually slightly shorter than the personal statement and a little more specific. The essay questions will definitely depend on the field, program, and school that you're applying for. Some popular examples of essays I've seen are Describe a situation where you've demonstrated leadership. Why this degree and this school? What is an example of a project that you're proud of? In general, regardless of what essay question you have to answer, you want to tell your story and give a different perspective on your experiences without reiterating what you already said in your personal statement. Tailor the essays to the specific program and the specific school that you are applying for. Aim to use examples, be genuine, and make sure to explain what you would add to the program throughout all of your essays. Let's get into the third thing, letters of rec. I've seen grad schools ask for around two to three letters of recommendation, which I think is pretty standard regardless of what field or program you're applying for. There are two main tips that I have when it comes to letters of rec. So number one, ask people who know you well. Letters of rec are an important part of your application and you really want to put your best foot forward or rather you want others to put your best foot forward. The best way to do that is having a personalized letter of recommendation by someone who really knows you well, someone who knows you, the work you've done, and someone you've talked to on multiple different occasions. They will be able to speak about your strengths and your experiences and actually be able to add to your application versus a very generic letter from someone who really doesn't know you that well. And tip number two for letters of rec, 
ask in advance. If possible, ask the recommenders a month or ideally more in advance. Everyone is busy and you want to give them as much time as possible that way they can write you a letter of recommendation. Next, let's move on to transcripts. First, you want to check if the application requires an official transcript or an unofficial transcript. If it requires an official transcript, you definitely want to make sure you order that ahead of time because figuring out how to order an official transcript from your school and then how to send it can be weirdly stressful and it's really not worth all of that. On the other hand, unofficial transcripts are a lot easier to get in my opinion. I was able to log on to my school portal and download it with a click of a button and then it was ready on my computer to upload to any application. Resumes are also another part of the application. So a few months ago, I made some resume advice videos, which are pretty relevant to this. So if you want to edit your resume, make sure to check those out. I'll link them right up here. But basically with grad schools, you want to tailor your resume to reflect relevant experiences. So you want to put experiences that are relevant to the program and the field that you would be going into. You also want to make it impactful in general, just with the words you use and quantifying your experiences. And last but not least, we have test scores. So what tests you take definitely depends on what program you're applying to. And nowadays, there are actually a lot of programs that don't require test scores anymore. If you do have to take the test though, do it much in advance. This is probably the first thing that you want to get out of the way with applying. It will also take the most amount of time just because you have to study for the test and then you take the test and then potentially you might have to retake the test. So yeah, just get it done early so it's out of the way before you have to deal with the rest of the application elements. Usually the test scores last for a few years anyway, so it's very easy to just take it and then move on. But overall, just plan out enough time for studying, test prep, and general preparation. So there are a lot of aspects to the grad school application, but in general, you want all the parts of it to show your interest for the specific school and program that you're applying for. You want to create a story or narrative with your whole application. Each part of it should tell a new angle about you and your professional personality, something that adds to why you would be a great fit for the program. Good luck with applying and thanks for watching. For more tips and advice videos, make sure to check out my channel and subscribe down below. I make videos about tech, my life in tech, data science, professional and personal development advice, and more. I also started a new series highlighting different women in tech, so make sure to check all of those out down below, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!